Hi everyone, this is Tulio Sergusa with Dojo Live. I am at GBTA 2019 in Chicago, and with me today I have Ron Rich, who's the CIO of The Parking Spot. Welcome, Ron, to Dojo Live. Looking forward to talking with you today. So, uh, would you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself and sure. your background. Sure. So, I started at The Parking Spot about seven years ago. Um, I started actually as, my first title was software developer, um, and then uh, I really came in when there was no other software developers and you know my boss at the time uh, saw a need for it and for an internal software team so um, I was really the first one on that team and you know, we built a team that you know started with five people and we're up to almost 30 now um, so I'm leading the group obviously um, and I'm responsible for our software development mobile development uh, network administration um, our help desk function um, and systems administration I definitely want to touch on what that transition <laughs> was like for you because a lot of our audience are software developers so in their career curious how to transition into leading a team and, and building a product uh, uh, as a product leader so we'll definitely touch on that yep, a little bit. Yep. Uh, if you don't mind tell us a little bit about the parking spot what gave birth to this company this right. idea so the parking spot is a near airport parking company um, and what really gave birth to it is, you know, the frustration with on-airport parking um, and how expensive it is. Um, and our business is really centered around our hospitality and our customer service and, you know, uh, the service that we provide to our customers, um, you know, from taking the luggage out of their trunk for them, loading it into a shuttle, dropping them off at the airport, um, all the way back on their, you know, return trip of getting picked up at the airport um, and getting it or picked up very quickly um, to and from the airport. Okay, so... I'm sorry if this is oversimplifying it. Are you kind of like the enterprise of parking, in a way? I guess so. For airports, pick you up, yes. drop you off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Very cool. So, yeah, it's very similar to, um, you know, that idea of the consolidated um, rental car facility. So, you know, you see those rental car shuttles throughout the airport. And, you know, we do a similar service, except customers park their cars with us. So we're more um, origination rather than destination. Okay. Great. And how many locations does the company have? We have 39 locations at 23 airports. 23 airports. Yes. Our 23rd airport was uh, just open uh, in Hartford. In Hartford, Connecticut. Yep. Very cool. So tell us a little bit about how do I, how do I use the, how do I know where to go? Like, do you guys have an app? How do you manage the customer? I sure hope we have an app. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So uh, I guess part of the journey that we've done, you know, from a technology standpoint is, uh, you know, we've basically redeveloped every single product that we have, um, you know, starting with seven years ago. Uh, One of my first projects was um, our GPS system where we track all of our shuttles throughout the airport. Um, And really what it did, you know, there was a huge operational impact uh, to that. But it also gave the customers the transparency to see where their shuttles are, um, to see, you know, the shuttle's a block away from me or, you know, I get it go out to the pickup zone now because the shuttle is arriving. Um, so we've really focused all of our products on um, the customer. We've put the customer first um, and tried to make this process as smooth as possible. Um, so in terms of, you know, finding us, we do, we've got a website, we have an app. Um, and, you know, recently we've seen a lot more adoption on the app. I think, um, you know, customers are becoming a lot more mobile friendly. Um, but our website used to be the, the biggest point for people to find us and you know reserve their parking um, and join our loyalty program, the Spot Club. Um, so yeah, I think our, our app now is really taking over. You know, with all of the um, cool new features you can do in a native app. It sounds like you've really thought about the customer experience. I love the idea of actually being able to see when the shuttle is arriving. What prompted? the feature set that you created for the app do you how do you go about validating those ideas do you have a user group how do you do that so uh we use uh what's called net promoter score um and it's really surveying our customers on um you know i think the question is uh how highly are you to recommend us and it's a scale of one to ten but as part of that there's a feedback element that the customers are able to give us um and we have based a lot of that based off of the or we developed a lot of our apps and products for that matter based off of the feedback from our customers. Um, And from a customer experience standpoint, um, you know, about five years ago, we recognized that we had so many different systems and none of them were really integrated with each other that um, the biggest mission that I've had was to create a unified customer experience. So 
from the start of you know finding us on our website all the way through you know coming back and paying for parking. Um, so that entire experience has really been redeveloped um, and it's a proprietary set of products to us. You know, we've developed it for us um, based on our needs and what our customers um, have told us. So, and we are constantly soliciting feedback from them to make these products better because, you know, if they don't like them, then we don't have a business, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're in uh, 23 cities, 39 lots. Right. How, what's the customer base like? What's your um, growth trajectory look like? I think that the customer base is very, very large, um, or it spans multiple different segments. Um, you know, we've got a, a large leisure segment and a large uh, business segment. So we've got this uh, segment of our business, what we call our SPAC Club Exec Program, um, that, you know, companies can um, sign on with us and they get discounted parking, you know, to make us our preferred parking vendor um, for business travel. Um, and then obviously we've got our leisure parkers, which is obviously a little bit more uh, prominent in the summer months and then obviously around the holidays. Um, but it's, it's a pretty steady stream, I would say, and a pretty healthy mix of both. Um, and I know that that's a really generic way of uh, summarizing it, but what we've seen over the past couple of years is that our customers are getting a lot more tech savvy um, and a lot more, um, you know, we've always known that they're on the go, but that's where the need for you know, a complete redo of our app and, you know, the integration of all these different services that we've spent building throughout the years, you know, we just kind of make it, made it more transparent to them because we've noticed that they're, you know, willing to do that, they're wanting to do that. Um, and our new entry exit system, um, the key really is the app and that's the, the best experience for it. Um, and we're, we're seeing some pretty good adoption. I don't have the exact figures on the top of my head, but um, I, a lot of our customers are being pushed through the app, um, you know, downloading it, using it, um, and enjoying it. Right, right. So I'm, I'm curious in those markets where you, where you have lots in those 23 cities, um, what's the value proposition to the end customer? Why would they use the parking spot versus just parking in the airport parking lot? Right. So I think um, uh, the value prop is kind of multifaceted. I think that, um, like I said earlier, our hospitality is really um, what makes us set apart from all of our competitors, not just the airport. Um, you know, we give free bottles of water to everybody on exit. Um, and, you know, our, our, the, the customer is really, and the customer satisfaction is really ingrained in our culture. Um, and we listen to them, obviously, and that's, that's how we built most of our products. But, you know, the other side of that is um, cost. I mean, we're, we're providing a much better experience for a lower cost. Um, and that's attractive to our business segment because um, obviously they can reduce on travel costs. But um, our leisure segment, I think that that kind of goes without saying that, you know, most of them are uh, more price sensitive shoppers when you're going on a vacation. You don't want the cost getting out of control. So um, people will park with us um, for extended periods of time. Um, and it's still very reasonable. So let's just shift gear a little bit about the technology itself. Having built this product, how do you manage inventory, right? So if I'm looking at the app, how do I know if, there's, if I'm gonna find a spot there? Do you have sensor data? How, do you, how did you build so, that? Yeah, so uh, our entry exit system is built with um, sensors, you know, obviously, and you know, we, we are constantly, or every single entry and every single exit is recorded. Um, and then we've also got these areas where it's called nesting, where you go into a different parking type. All of these areas are uh, monitored for when cars um, enter the lot and exit the lot. Um, and our occupancy really is based off of those, uh, or that technology. Um, and then from an occupancy standpoint, what we always tell our customers is reserve, because you A, get the best deal, and then you get a guaranteed spot. So, We've pushed our customers more to the reserve model because um, it's much better for them. It's much more convenient. I mean, they're showing one QR code when they get in. They're showing a QR code when they exit. Um, and pretty much everything else is done for them. Um, and then they're guaranteed a spot also. Um, but from an occupancy standpoint, uh, that data and that data element is probably one of the most critical metrics that we have um, on an everyday basis. I mean, we watch it real time in our office. Um, you know, the commercial group is always looking at it to make decisions, you know, on the fly and, um, you know, figure out why there's, there may be lower occupancy at one lot versus another lot. Um, so, I mean, that was, was one of the starting metrics of this entire system that we built is that we've got to have accurate data there. Is there any other data that you track in terms of 
the kind of cars that go, how do you know your customer base basically when they download the app? Is there any additional yeah, data I mean, set that they, you track to figure out market dynamics or your yeah, customer in a, base? In an ideal world, um, the customers would sign up for the SPAC club. Um, and then we, we know who they are then, um, and we know their preferences for future parking. Um, and we use that data to uh, kind of tailor the experience to them. Um, you know, during the, the peak seasons and the off seasons, for example, we send them offers based on what they, you know, stayed in in the past, whether if it's covered parking or uncovered parking or valet parking. Um, but we do have a, a data analytics group that is analyzing data, um, you know, to make decisions for the business and, you know, for our customers. Um, to really determine this customer segment would prefer this experience, so maybe we should market to or you know provide them with this type of experience. Okay, so I I, I said that I would uh, go into this conversation with you about <laughs> how you made the shift from a software dev developer to a C level position where you're leading the team. There's a lot of uh, software developers who listen to the show, and and so any words of wisdom. First of all, let's talk about how did that happen? Was that always planned to begin with, or did that just kind of, tell us a little bit of how that happened. Love to hear the story, yeah. and then love to hear your your things you've learned about yourself along the way, but first let's hear about how right. you got there. Right, so, um, you know, I originally, and I tell this story almost to every person that I interview, but, <laughs> you know, I, I started, or I came to interview uh, as a software developer, and at the time I actually had a broken hand. So they looked at me like I was crazy. How is this guy gonna do anything? But um, so, you know, I was interviewing and I went back uh, home and I was like, you know, I'm not really sure what a parking company needs with a software developer. Um, my original position actually sat on the help desk team um, at the parking spot. And there was four others, like I said earlier. Um, and I was kind of gonna be this you know, software developer who wasn't really doing the, the job of help desk, but also helping with that. So. Um, I actually went back in for a third interview with, um, you know, the person who ultimately became my boss. And, you know, I said, you got to tell me what the plan is here. I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing it, and maybe it's just because I'm not that familiar with the business. But he laid it out, you know, very, very well and so clear and so concise that, you know, when the offer letter came in, I accepted it right away. Um, so from there then, um, you know, we always knew that there was going to be a larger team um, for software um, at the parking spot because... At the time, we were using vendors, um, you know, the website, uh, I'm sure our guest services team was very happy to see that one go, but it was, you know, it was nine years old already, um, or eight years old, you know, when I joined, and it was time to do a refresh across all fronts, um, and, you know, it was time to make the investment in technology in the business. Um, so, uh, from there, I, you know, uh, Kind of monitored our vendors and worked with them and you know uh, the the joke internally was my my title was software developer but i never actually developed <laughs> um so it it became more of you know project management and then really uh defining product strategy and uh identifying the needs of our customers working with all the different groups in the company and you know as we grew um you know uh, the, the software developers uh, began reporting to me i think um, at one point, we were kind of split. Um, we had the infrastructure group and then the uh, uh, software group, and we reported up to the CIO. Um, and you know, eventually, um, the infrastructure group I absorbed them um, under me. You know, due to some organizational um, changes that they were making at the parking spot, and you know, from there, it kind of made one cohesive team of you know, the software group is developing the product, but there's a whole other aspect of you know, who are the people that are making sure that our systems are running and the lights are on and, you know, we have internet connectivity and, you know, we're developing this proprietary product and, you know, we're using our own servers to host it. We have our own data center and, you know, everything just kind of followed with, um, you know, here's a product that we're developing and then now here's what the entire team has to do and here's how the entire team is affected by it. So um, from a journey standpoint, um, you know, I think that it just... Uh, became apparent of my drive and motivation, which has put me in, you know, the position that I am now. Um, you know, I, I still like the parking spot very much. When I interviewed there, it seemed like a very small business. You know, everybody knew everybody. Um, and I think our headquarters since then has probably about doubled in size, um, and it still feels the same way. Um, our culture has not changed at all. You guys are headquartered right here in yep. Chicago, right? Okay. 
So there you have it. <laughs> you know, uh, join a company that you're passionate about their future, what they want to do. So it's, it's obvious that the company has shifted more into uh, leveraging technology to drive its future mm -hmm. and to, to move forward. Um, did that come, how, how did that come about? Was that something that came from the CEO? Was that a collective idea? Who was like sitting at a table saying, hey, you know what, we need to reinvest and kind of get up with the times. Right. And, and there's some differentiation we can gain from that. Yep. How did that conversation come about? So that um, was kind of a, it was a group effort. Um, so um, my first uh, manager, the CIO of the firm, he ultimately is working at our ownership now um, as their COO. And, you know, him along with our CEO and our ownership group um, have really, really came to this um, conclusion that we need to invest in technology because it, it is what's going to differentiate us um, in the long run. And our ownership group, um, Green Core Partners, is very passionate about technology. Um, and they've invested in the business. And, um, you know, like I said, our corporate headquarters has doubled since um, I've been there. Um, but, you know, it was, it, there was a lot of issues with these existing systems that we had. And um, we did go to market and we tried to find something out there that, um, you know, would suit our needs across all facets, not just um, one particular product. And, you know, uh, we all kind of came to the conclusion that I think developing this ourselves to what we need would be the best way forward. Um, and, you know, we couldn't do that without the investment of uh, or the Green Corp, you know, their investment um, and having the support of our CEO. Um, you know, it, there was a, was a lot of years of a lot of developing and a lot of trying things and, you know, this didn't work. All right, so we're going to switch gears and try this. Um, so there was a lot of trial and error and everybody at the company, not just our leadership, um, was very accommodating and knew what we were trying to undertake and knew the, the, the depth of what we were trying to do. Um, and they really all, you know, came together to, to help us. And, you know, so that's why I keep coming back to culture and, you know, when you're looking for a job, you, you have to, you know, pay attention to that because I do think that we have something special at the parking spot. Um, just based on my experience there, um, you know, like you said originally, it's not typical for a software developer to become the head of a technology organization, but um, the parking spot enabled me to do that. That's wonderful. I think it's it's great advice uh, that that you could offer to the people listening about if you're a traditional brick and mortar business or one that's traditionally not been very technology driven. There is the tendency to want to buy off the shelf kind of capabilities and, and often enough it just doesn't meet the specific needs of, of what you're trying to accomplish. So it's not just an exercise in sort of, hey, let's just modernize and use some technology. It is literally a, a transformational initiative. Um, if you, looking back through that experience now, what words of wisdom would you have for any company that's sort of on the fence about modernizing, digitizing, and making technology work for them as a competitive advantage, not just as a tool, what, what advice would right. you have, having gone through this experience in the past eight years, yeah. for anyone who might be listening and thinking about how to best do that? So we've um, done something that a lot of companies are really reluctant, and we did a rip and replace. Um, you know, we just completely started over, and you know, the issue that you have in some of these um, industries that don't have technology um, readily available to them or the off-the-shelf systems are not, um, very, are, are not very flexible and don't provide enough flexibility for um, that industry, you know, it's something to consider of, you know, developing um, proprietary products um, that really suit your needs. Um, it's very overwhelming initially, um, but I think uh, if you surround yourself by the right team and you hire the right people, um, you know, you, it becomes a successful product and, you know, I would be lying if I said that it was all um, a walk in the park because it wasn't. <laughs> and I think that um, wanting to make the investment um, and then seeing it through is really um, the key to doing that. Um, you know, there's, there's going to be mistakes that you make. There's going to be um, hurdles that you're going to have to overcome that, you know, initially you're going to look at it and say, how, how are we even going to do this? And, you know, um, like I said, hiring the right people um, really make a world of a difference. And so I want to ask a little bit more about hiring the right people. So obviously you need alignment around the tech stack. You need people who have that skill set. But how do you go about aligning 
what does that mean to you, the right people? What does that uh, look like? Because that's like a, a formula on itself, right? Everybody's always struggling with the right cultural fit. Uh, some organizations are more about you know expansive culture, which is not about fit, more about expansive because you're not going to grow and evolve if you're just hiring the same kind of people all the time. So what does that mean to you guys? What's that been like? Yeah, so I've had the luxury of, I think, at least interviewing everybody on the technology team, um, hiring or being responsible for the hiring of most of them. Um, and, you know, this is another statement that I've been making for years. Um, whenever I interview someone, I tell them, whether it's a developer, a network administrator, a systems administrator, um, everybody on the Parking Spot IT team has to be a self-starter and a self-manager. Um, you know, we're not a huge technology company, um, but, you know, we have 30 people on the, the IT group, and you it's not going to be every single thing is mapped out. Um, you have to make decisions for yourself. Um, and quite frankly, I think when uh, you condone that type of atmosphere where employees feel like they are making the contribution, that's how they grow, and that's how they develop their skills. Um, and sometimes you have to push them beyond, you know, what they think their limit is, but then, you know, once they get to the other side, they realize, oh, wow, <laughs> I could do this now. Um, so you've got to be willing to learn, um, and quite frankly, in, in, you know, if you're joining a company or a team that is um, developing all new products from the ground up and don't really have any kind of baseline or, you know, something that you're comparing yourself to, to, um, you know, somebody else who's already done it, um, you have to be okay with uh, vagueness sometimes um, and, you know, uh, requirements that may not be completely vetted out um, but will get vetted out, you know. And you have to be willing to do an R&D phase where, you know, I'm going to put some work towards this, but we may not ultimately use it in the end. Um, but I, I take uh, employee development pretty seriously um, because I think that, you know, once you find the right people, which right means, you know, they... They do culturally fit into our company, but we also do want to expand our culture. Um, and we've hired um, a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life. That brings a lot of different perspective, which is healthy, I think, for a team. Um, but, you know, culture is just as important to us as skill set. And I think once, if you don't hold the culture piece, then, um, you know, you're going to end up losing it and you're going to focus on skill set. And um, like I said, self-managers and self-starters. <laughs> I think that's great news. You know, uh, Dojo Live's uh, sponsor, Nearsoft, is a self-managed organization. Been that way for over a decade. And it's all about culture expansiveness. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a more proactive approach to that today. There's a few putting together some initiative about being uh, creating organizations that are co-managed and co-owned. You know, it creates this kind of scenario. So congratulations for it. For succeeding at that because uh, that's ultimately allowing you guys to grow very right. rapidly and yeah, expand. Yeah, we, we still have a you know reporting structure and we still have a team you know a traditional team. But um, I, I just I always say that in every interview because if they're not willing to um, you know manage themselves and you know be able to start a project and have that ambition, they probably won't be successful in the phase that we're currently in of you know building emerging technologies and you know, really uh, breaking through and, um, you know, doing this for ourselves because, I mean, quite frankly, it was a little bit unheard of seven years ago that we were actually going to do this. Um, and, you know, it's it has worked out and um, it's the people that really made it possible. Well, congratulations on all the growth. <laughs> and, and if people want to download the, the app, what, what do they go? Did you just search the, the parking spot? Yeah, you just spot? search the parking spot on um, the App Store or iOS App Store and uh, the Google Play Store. Well, I'm definitely a convert. I'm going to be downloading that app. Please the biggest do. challenge for me has always been I don't like the idea that I have to then figure out how to get to the airport or it's always really far and this is really convenient. And you don't know when it's coming. You've pretty much taken out all yeah. the reasons why I don't usually okay. use you pick a location and you hit the word or the button directions and it'll take so you right I'm, I'm all in I love it so uh, thank you for being with us yep. and thank you for thank joining you. us uh, stay tuned for some additional uh, interviews this coming week the next one is with trip action I'm looking forward to that so thank you for joining us until the next time